Well, good afternoon. This is Handlock Steve wishing you a very pleasant afternoon. And something that I wanted to discuss with you this afternoon uh, was, I think, probably the what will turn out to be the biggest ongoing problem right now, uh, and that is inflation and uh, also lack of availability of goods. Uh, inflation, we're going to get hit with a double whammy. Uh, firstly, we have inflation from money creation, okay, and the money that was created for CERB and all of these um, uh, programs to help businesses and individuals and so on and so forth. And uh, the reason we didn't see inflation through money creation back in 2008 is because uh, that money really didn't hit the streets. Uh, that money stayed in the bank's uh, hands and it was exported to other countries as hot money. This uh, time, uh, this money uh, is going directly into the economy. People are spending that money and they're spending every little bit of it um, because it really is only, you know, a sort of um, a poor makeup for what they may have been earning before. In, in certainly some cases, other cases, people will be earning more than they were earning before. And of course, you know, there's absolutely no doubt in my mind that people will, will be working for cash, doing little jobs here and there to make up any shortfalls. And uh, again, you know, that is being uncounted and um, spent into the economy. So all of this money creation will lead to an inflationary effect. Uh, so your currency is effectively being um, devalued at the present moment uh, by a rate of knots. Now the other inflation we're going to experience is the other kind of inflation is from a shortage of goods. And again, this is going to come from two main areas. The first one is inclement weather. Uh, we, I don't know if you've been following the weather of the world, but it has been a disaster this year uh, from a growing perspective. Uh, cold, wet springs, early frosts, um, heavy rainfalls, uh, no rainfall. Um, every part of the world, especially growing regions, have been adversely affected by the weather. And this is going to put an incredible amount of pressure, especially countries like China and India, for example, who have um, quite an amount of wealth stockpiled, uh, gold stockpiled, and they can afford to pay high prices. And believe you me, they will pay any price to stop a revolution in their country because that's what happens when you have food shortages. People will revolt. Okay, uh, there is an energy situation caused by CV related shortages, whether it be worker shortages, part shortages, uh, the semiconductor shortage. Uh, this is one of those little things that is going to creep through so many areas. For one, for example, would be uh, delivery truck drivers. Okay, uh, the truck breaks down, it needs a part. Uh, either the part isn't available because the semiconductor that runs the machine that makes the part isn't available, or the part itself is a semiconductor, um, or this, a semiconductor is part of the uh, part that's needed. And so that truck is now out of commission. So that is one of the trucks that would deliver the parts to the truck repair shop. Uh, you, you see how complex this can become where everybody, absolutely everybody, uh, is going to be affected by these shortages. And where there are shortages, the person with the biggest pockets will drive the pricing market. And so many of us will be carried along uh, for the ride in this situation with food, fuel, parts and resources. So what can you do to protect yourself against this? Now, I'm going to say right off the start, this is not financial advice, but traditionally, and there is a newcomer in this, but there is three hard currencies that have been used as a refuge. Gold and silver are the traditional and the newcomer is Bitcoin. Um, I like all three, although I think gold is a little expensive, it's a little overpriced for what it is, but uh, Bitcoin and uh, silver, absolutely, silver is an industrial metal and there will be continued in increase, in fact, not just a continue, but an increased demand for silver in the use of solar panels, which are now being used in the Middle East to pave the desert. And, uh, you know, one of those solar panels that you see in a farmer's field, like a big one, 
you know, uh, the ones out here. There, there is at least two or three ounces of silver in each one. Now you imagine paving the desert with that and how silver will be affected uh, price-wise. Anyway, it is a great hedge against inflation. Uh, gold, not so much because it's, a, it's, a, it's affected by the paper market. And whether that will end or not, uh, I have absolutely no idea. Um, the other things that you can do is, land, I think land is going to come down in price. To be quite honest with you, I think there's going to be a real estate crash. And uh, again, not financial advice, but I do think that land will come down in price. Um, what will go up in price is parts. So I would highly recommend that right now you go through uh, and take an inventory of all of the things in your home that you absolutely need to make it through this winter. You know, uh, furnace parts is something that typically goes by that part. If not, uh, it, do you have a backup heat source? Is it a wood stove? You can buy portable wood stoves where you can just vent it out of a window if you need to in an emergency. Is it kerosene? Do you need to buy kerosene? Remember, kerosene has an 18-year shelf life, so it's a very good choice. Uh, but you do have to watch out because you have a carbon dioxide and a carbon monoxide problem uh, when you're burning fuels openly inside your home. So you need to vent, and I would get a carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide smoke detector uh, just as a backup. Okay, be very, very careful when you're burning inside a living space because these are silent killers. Okay, but other than that, uh, like I say, if you've got any parts for a vehicle, if you have a farm tractor, um, anything which is critical, critical infrastructure to you surviving the winter uh, up here in Canada or where, wherever you live, um, you need to buy that part now because I can guarantee you that next year it will either be double or triple the price or it will be purely unavailable because, for, as I say, the, the person that manufactures uh, can't get. You know, what about mining? You know, we have a huge coal issue, uh, China and India. You know, coal-fired hydro, that's a big source of energy for them over there. They can't get enough coal. You know, they underbought uh, in these uh, clement weather, in these warmer winters, and uh, going green, they, they turned off fossil fuels, and now we've got a crisis on hand, and they don't have the supplies, and they can't mine it quick enough. And of course, these mining operations have been uh, affected by CV and the outbreak, and so on and so forth. So, you can expect ongoing disruptions uh, in all of these areas, and every single one of them is going to cause inflation. So your money is going to lose value and things are going to be more expensive. Okay, so you need to take that into account and um, at least in part get yourself some hard currency uh, with Bitcoin. If you don't feel confident enough to buy Bitcoin, at least discover how to buy Bitcoin. Uh, discover the exits and entries, how to create a wallet where are you going to put your Bitcoin, how are you going to transfer in and out of the fiat banking system where you can spend it, can, can you spend it through a wallet on your phone, how do you put a wallet on your phone, all of these things uh, you should be figuring out now because I can guarantee you when the time comes and everybody runs for the exits, uh, it's all going to happen in a space of about a month and you will wonder what the hell happened. Okay, so get your lifeboats ready, get your supplies in order, and uh, be aware that prices will be rising. And as I say, once capitulation starts, you will not be able to stop the rush for the exit. So bear that in mind, that this will be a real problem ongoing. Uh, they're all talking that um, inflation will peak in May. 2022 okay so peak so it may take till the end of 2022 into 2023 for it to fully subside are you ready for that kind of a shock in your family food food because there is issues in farming food is going to be a real issue Farming is a much more delicately balanced thing than you might imagine. You know, crops only have a certain lifespan where they're good to eat 
and things had to come out of the field onto the back of a truck and ship to the supermarket where you can buy them uh, in a very timely fashion. Otherwise, you lose the entire crop. And again, because of the outbreak, because of the part shortage, that is not possible. So you need to be thinking of alternatives, uh, alternative greens, sprouting, for example. Can you grow window boxes? Well, whatever it is that you can do. And you need to have a family meeting. And you need to address some of these issues and you need to do it in the immediate future, if not right now. Okay, so that's the best advice I can give and I think it's the biggest problem that we will all be facing in our new world going forward. Okie dokie, if you've enjoyed this video, please like, comment and subscribe and please share widely. And in the meantime, this is Handlock Steve signing off, wishing you a very pleasant afternoon and we'll talk very, very shortly. You take care now. See ya. Bye.